Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Laurent Ferrier Galet Traveler Cloisonne Enamel. You can see and you can purchase this extraordinary enamel dialed white gold dual direct impulse escapement dual time traveler on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during these videos to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop and naturally complete pricing details for this and our entire collection of pre-owned Laurent Ferrier timepieces. Now the watch on my wrist is an extraordinary execution mechanically and aesthetically, a case that is comfortable ergonomically outstanding, visually distinctive, exquisitely constructed. That's only the case. You've still got an extraordinary 80 hour power reserve Bessensong chronometer micro rotor dual direct impulse escapement movement hand finished in Geneva style and a Champlevé and Cloisonne enamel dial featuring principally the image of the western hemisphere above the equator. Now the watch is easy to wear. Laurent Ferrier is known for excellent ergonomics and size that though contemporary doesn't cross the boundary to oversize. So the watch is large for a men's dress timepiece, 41 millimeters in diameter, not including the travel time pushers or the crown. The watch is reasonably slim made more reasonable by the dramatic slope of the case flank, 13.2 millimeters thick, but again, the watch is effectively a dome on the wrist and any dress cuff or sleeve beneath will easily ride up and over the flank of the case. From lug to lug, it's 49 millimeters, which makes it full sized again, but not oversized. I believe you could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. Now let me see if I can give us a little bit more aperture because I want to bring out the colors of this watch. They are extraordinary, not just in their intensity, but in their nuance and gradient. Now the watch is easy to wear on the wrist, as I mentioned. You can also see that the lugs are relatively short cropped and tightly downturned. You can see no tricks. This is a normal strap, beautifully made, very comfortable, flat and supple. It's a navy blue alligator leather, medium rectangular scales, monotone stitch with a folded edge. It has a wonderful suede calfskin on the underside. I absolutely love it because this watch on the wrist feels as special as it looks. Now, it has a relatively simple but thoughtfully designed white gold pin buckle to match the 18 karat white gold case. You can see that there's a little bit of fluting and contouring on this buckle to make it something more than an afterthought or a default design. It certainly isn't that. It preserves the easy on the fly adjustability that many crave in their timepieces. Now the case is all of high polish. The lines are simple, but there's almost a biomorphic elegance and grace. Everything appears to flow into everything else. So sensuous, so curvaceous. This is a watch that has a wonderful flame surfacing effect across its bezel, its lugs, and its case band. Highly dynamic, despite being all of high polish and continuously rounded, there are enough arcs and curves to catch the light and do interesting things with it. Plus, again, being 41 millimeters, all of high polish, you can get away with that. When you start to get into the realm of the 43, 44, 45 and up, high polish can become a little bit too extroverted and garish. Not the case here. Now you have matching white gold for the dart style indices and what Laurent Ferrier describes as assegai hands or uh, effectively a white gold abstract of a spear used for traditional warfare on the African continent. Now you'll note that underneath that minute hand you can see a large aperture for the scroll second time zone. Now, that is your reference time. That is where you are not. So it's in 24 hour format. So you know whether you're looking, for instance, at a time between 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock at night or in the morning. You can see clearly it is at night. Now, it's a different size and shape than the date window. Yes, it does spoil the symmetry a little bit, but for me, it actually helps to have immediate reference to different sizes associated with different functions. That's, that's just logical from my point of view, and as a travel watch, it does need to have some level of functional logic, and I think that was a reasonable decision to make on the part of the designers. Now, I do want to call out the fact that the dial is spectacular. You're looking at many different colored vitreous paints, that is, glass paints, that are used to create a fired enamel dial. The base is made of 18 
17 karat gold. The enamel paint is this effectively melted glass. It, it's painted on and then it's fired at about 840 degrees centigrade over several firings to create the look you see here. Now it is a cloisonne dial, though somewhat confusingly Laurent Ferrier has also described it as champlevé. The difference is that with a cloisonne dial you lay out wire frames and then you, you melt them on and paint within them so you effectively add and then you paint. Whereas with Champlevé, you scoop out hollows into the dial and then you fill those hollows with the rim of the hollow acting as the border between the shapes and the shades. So effectively, cloisonne is additive and Champlevé is reductive and it may be that both techniques are used but the effect is the same. In the end, you have a beautifully defined set of land masses, bodies of water, and due to different colors of paints being used as well as different depth in the Champlevé scoops that are effectively applied to the dial, you get different colors, yes, but also different shades and levels of darkness and lightness. It is wonderfully nuanced, beautifully glossy, and again, because it is enamel and not some sort of a lacquer or a galvanized treatment, it can withstand the ravages of time as it resists oxidation and tarnish. Now, you'll also note that the watch features a very subtle metallic graining to the date and the hour discs. They're beautifully executed. I mentioned you'll need a loop. Well, that is not just for the enamel base. It's also for small details like the quality of the continuously rounded and polished hands, the dart style indices and the finishing on the wheels for the date as well as the travel time. Now I want to show you something though. This is how the system works. You'll see the date can be driven backwards or forward. As I am traveling, I'm setting the local time backwards or forwards as I jump in one hour increments as I fly in my aircraft. Now you'll also note that you can fly either direction across the international date line and drive the date in both directions with no hazard to the movement. That's part of the underlying functional logic of the watch and it is very user friendly. You'll even note how from head on the case, the lugs, and even the crown have been expressed fully, but the adjusters are nicely tucked and almost completely hidden when viewed in a flush profile. The crown is handsome. In Laurent Ferrier fashion, it's one part wristwatch and one part pocket watch, paying homage to both eras. Now the movement, however, is thoroughly contemporary with a few historic ideas implemented in grand fashion. Now, let me see if I can focus in. Okay, there we go. Boom, all right. So you're looking at the Laurent Ferrier LF230.01 movement. Yes, it's based on the early FBN 229. So the earlier FBN 229 combines its dual direct impulse, unlubricated natural escapement with two escape wheels directly impulsing the balance. The result is more precise timing and less parasitic loss of energy. So you maintain both better balance amplitude over a given time and better precision over any given time time. It's an old concept originally conceived by Abraham Louis Breguet here executed in a wristwatch format. Now there's more going on in terms of material science as you have the oscillator which is the balance being impulsed by the escape wheels which are then themselves locked and unlocked by a silicon sort of semi-pallet. It's not precisely an anchor like you would see on a conventional Swiss lever. It's an alternator that locks and unlocks each escape wheel in turn. Now the escape wheels themselves are made of nickel phosphorus and they're executed by Liga construction. So there's a lot of technology below the surface, which is what I like. Traditional materials and finish fully expressed and the materials technology below the surface and unseen. You'll note that there is a gorgeous linear Cote de Genève because this is a Geneva manufacturer aligned perfectly across the bridges. And if you look in the hollow of the cock for the balance as well as the cleft of the barrel bridge right next to the center wheel, there are no fewer than five interior angles on this movement. And that is one of the most difficult individual tasks for a watch finisher, first to learn and then to execute. You'll also note that the edge of every bridge lights up beautifully, and it's easiest to see when I turn it flush to the camera like this. Beautiful mirrored anglage, effectively black polish like you'll see on a screw head here, as well as the cock for the balance, but executed on the edges of the bridge. This is no machine beveled surface. This is entirely hand finished. Now, of course, everything that turns completely black when I rotate flush to the camera is black polished or poly noir, the highest standard of optical finishing for watch movements. You have a micro rotor that winds the 80 hour power reserve. It beats away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. It uses a pawl system and a jeweled staff. So it's effectively a silent and 
imperceptible, that is physically imperceptible winding action. If you've ever experienced something like a, a robust unidirectional Chagere Le Coult or Valjoux 7750 movement, this is nothing like that. This is more like a micro rotor Rolex with that degree of smoothness. Now the watch movement does not hack, that's the one technical deficiency that I can highlight and it's really the only one as not only is the watch movement beautiful and technically accomplished but it is a French certified Besançon Observatory chronometer which is impressive because that is a fully cased up test. Like the COSC in Switzerland they test the ISO 3159 standard but COSC is a test of the bare movement. This is a gauntlet thrown down for the entire cased watch and there is a tangible and meaningful difference from a watchmaker's perspective. Finally, it has a slight overcoil hairspring architecture. There's a slight overcoil bend to the hairspring, which helps the watch to keep better time with respect to any position vis-a-vis -vis gravity. And the watch is extraordinarily adjusted in six positions to even out the effect of gravity on the timing. Chronometer standard in general is five positions, so there is nowhere to hide for imprecision in this watch. Beautiful, precise, innovative, and part of the vanguard of the best of modern independent horology brands. This is the Laurent Ferrier Galet Traveler Cloisonne or possibly Champlevet enamel.